I'm interested in many years in studying creative exploration. You might heard about exploration, about discovery, in a big context, uh, Einstein, for example, or Picasso. Let's take Picasso. For many years, people were making drawing, and everyone knew that you make a face from one angle on the canvas. And then Picasso had this crazy idea that you can have two faces of a person on the same canvas, one from here and one from here. And everyone start exploiting or look, uh, walking on this region of discovery. So this is often the example we give of a creative leap of a discovery after an exploration process. And we use the term exploration before the creative leaps and exploitation. For the people more uh, business oriented among you, maybe you can think about something like Steve Jobs, who is often the name I heard when I asked my entrepreneurship student, who is your creative hero? So he would often say Steve Jobs, Elon Musk. In the early 2000s, he and Apple came up with the idea that you can sell a song over the internet, just a single song. Everyone knew that you can either send, sell an album, 10 songs or so, for many, many years this was a paradigm, or people will download it for free. It was the beginning of the internet. And Apple had this idea that people would pay 99 cents, almost a dollar, for a single song, and made a revolution leading to the iPod, iTunes, and the world as, of the digital media as we know it today. So where are these creative ideas coming from? Where is this creative leap coming from? I'm coming from cognitive scientists, and I'm interested in studying this uh, phenomena in a, make, in a micro level. And I'm hopeful that we can do it not on the Einstein and the Picasso and the Steve Jobs of the world, but also on every one of us. And this stems from a belief that I have that each one of you watching this video now is a creative person, capable of creative exploration and creative leaps. And I'm based it on the fact that I know one thing about all of you. All of you were kids, you were children, and children, as you know, are very creative. They just roam in the world and discover things, and sometimes they discover things that are useful. For example, they can do something like finding that instead of counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, they can discover that they might do something like five, six, seven. This small discovery, this creative leap, is not the first time that this was discovered, but it's the first time it was discovered for this kid. And it is significant. This is part of our development. So we have this belief that we can study creativity, creative leaps, exploration in the lab. And in the last decade or so, uh, with a lot of my colleagues, what we are doing are trying to make this uh, large phenomena, like creative leaps, into the lab. We're doing things like bringing people uh, in front of a computer uh, screen and ask them to explore a world of geometric shapes. And once in a while they find something interesting and then they save it. By the way, if you are interested to get a sense of the paradigm we are using, this computer game, one of many paradigms that we use, you can check here in the links and you can click and play it a bit for yourself and help us also collect some data. So they roam and play with this world of shapes and suddenly they find something interesting. If you want, they are making a creative leap. And we are trying to understand what are the uh, reasons that some people discover some uh, area and some people don't? For example, some people discover the possibility of making airplane of, or space invader in this silly game, and some people uh, not. And we believe that this moment of creativity, this moment of creative leap, is maybe similar to this big ideas like we mentioned from Einstein or, or Picasso. And I want to tell you the story of the most important or most famous maybe creative leaps that we, can, uh, we, we know. And it's a story you know, but you might have misheard it. It's a story about Archimedes. Everyone knows the story of Archimedes. Basically, what do you remember? You remember that he jumped out of the bus naked, yelling, Eureka, Eureka, I found it, I found it. But let's go a few days before. What happened? He was an expert. He was an expert in measuring geometric shapes, volumes, uh, cones, etc. And the king has asked him to measure the volume of a very complex object. It was a crown. The king had a suspicion that someone put, instead of gold, some other material. And he wanted to understand the volume of, the, of this complex object in order to know if the weight of the gold is correct. Archimedes didn't manage to solve this problem. He scratched his head. He was working in the lab, making diagrams, etc., for three days. And after three days, he got, you know, I don't know, I, don't, I am not able to, to solve this problem. So what do you do? He went to the 
bus stop to the uh, big bus in the Roman time, in the Greek time, and maybe he took his robe, maybe a slave put some oil on him, and then forgive my French, something very peculiar happened. He put his behind into the water. And as often when something like this happened, when you put your behind in the water, the water arises a bit. So this is very common, this is very mundane, this is, has nothing to do with geometry, with equation. However, the moment of the creative leap was the moment where Archimedes noticed something. He noticed something that everyone ignored. Ignored the fact that you put your behind in the water, the water arises, going up. And he had this crazy idea that the waters that are going up will give you the volume, because you can mark the uh, diameter of the bus, show the changes of the line, and then you get the volume. And if you, instead of your butt, you'll put your crown, you'll get the volume of the, cro of the crown. Sorry. And then he jumped and, uh, uh, naked and asked and yelled, Eureka, Eureka. So we often uh, tell the story about, as a story of serpendicity, something happening suddenly. But for me, the story, by the way, coming from Arthur Kessler in the fantastic book in the 60s, The Act of Creation, it's a story of listening and of awareness. Archimedes were able to notice something that most of us ignore. We tend to see things in the world, and he managed to see something, pay his attention, listen to it, and not ignore it, take it further into a new realm of uh, exploration. And I think this is what often happens. Maybe someone in Apple has this idea that we take for granted this assumption that people can buy a record, 10 songs, or download for free. But maybe there is assumptions there that we are missing. Maybe we can try uh, something new. And we see this kind of phenomena also happening in the, la happening in the lab. Someone discover uh, a potential, what uh, Kaufman called the adjacent possibility. So 20% of the people discover this region of airplane or uh, space invaders, many others do not. And we are trying to isolate the cognitive factor or maybe the emotional factor that help people to do the creative leap. So this has been going for a decade decade and in the last few years we are starting to discover something else. People differ not only on their ability to enter a new region from exploration to exploitation via a creative leap, they also differ on the moment when they leave a good and valuable region of uh, 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 products. And we can see it not only for people, we can see it in organization. Imagine that you are uh, a film uh, a camera company in the 70s, and you are really good at selling film and using camera via film. Suddenly an engineer came and said, we can have a digital camera. I'm talking, of course, about Kodak. We invented the digital camera in the mid 70s, but we're not able to understand that there is a potential here. There is a, a potential of creating a whole market of digital camera. It took 15 to 20 years to, to, for Kodak to realize it and almost go bankrupt as a, a, a as a consequence of the digital revolution. And Clayton Christian, uh, who wrote the famous book, um, The Innovator's Dilemma, taught us that often organizations like Kodak make these mistakes because they are too good. They are too entrenched in the current exploitation. They don't know how to make the next creative leap because they listen to their customers, they listen to the current technology, and cannot recognize a new technology that's coming from uh, below. And I believe it's often happened to people also when we get stuck in some exploitation and we are not able to make this jump, leave the current useful crop of products and go to explore again. What do we, ne what do we need? One hypothesis we are ex uh, exploring currently in the lab, we need security. We need someone to uh, support us in this not easy journey, leaving something that we know so well and uh, go and explore again with the belief that we can find something new and make another uh, creative leap. This is what we are doing in the lab. We are trying it to connect to different realm, uh, industry, psychology, and uh, we are still in this process of creative exploration ourselves.